The last bit of this introductory section is on another syllabus area. This time I'm going to show you, we're looking at Unit C, also known as Financial Statements. And the area here is basically financial statements, uh, meaning published accounts. Okay, uh, Section 11, uh, A and B, and that talks about discontinued operations. They're quite topical these days. In many parts of the world, there is a recession going on, and companies may decide to close down certain divisions, so maybe even selling off subsidiaries. But I'm thinking of it more as closing down a division. So a college might have many qualifications, and if they decide to close down one of them, perhaps. Unlikely to be ACCA because it's such a popular one, but let's suppose they do close down a particularly you know, small division, uh, sell it off. How do they communicate the closure or indeed the startup of a new division in exchange for the old one? How do they communicate that to their shareholders, people who own the company? That's what I want to show you. Again, quite topical these days, and so I'm going to cover it as if it's coming up in the exam. So that's the idea, discontinued operations. More, more or less self-explanatory, as you'd imagine. The next area, discontinued operations, the best way of thinking of this topic is to imagine it as making some amendments to the basic formats, uh, the income statement in the IAS-1 Companies Act 2006. Don't forget the kind of situation you're dealing with is a company that's based in the UK, subject to the Companies Act 2006 in the UK, but uh, operating with overseas interest. That's the sort of scenario you're looking at. It, it's called published accounts, and of course it's a subject to question two, as I was saying in my introductory videos. And it's been brought about by a more recent IAS, IAS 8, let's say. There are quite a few of these IASs around that brought this in, but the, most, the, the best one to acknowledge is discontinued operations. Because sometimes a new IS will change things in the past. So I'll just call it IS-8 because that's the most recent uh, as far as discontinued operations is concerned. All right, so there you are. That's the context in which I'm doing this. If you pick up your exam paper, question two, remember you've just done question one consolidations, question two is on published accounts. Now the basic published accounts is where you have a trial balance, a few adjustments and so on. Now, what could happen in a big published accounts question is the directors might have decided to close down one of their divisions, you see? And so I would say to you, the best way of thinking about it is it's like a little attachment to the existing published accounts knowledge that you would have had by the time I do this topic. So I'm jumping in here into this part of the syllabus, you having done published accounts with me, in class, some homework exercises, etc. So way down the syllabus, we come across this topic. Now, it could come up as part of published accounts, as I say, or it could come up as part of questions four and five, which is all about accounting standards. So the examiner could say to you, look, this company has decided to close down this division. Tell me about it. What is a discontinued operation? And you've got to say things like, well, it's a division that's closed down, etc., and um, the nature and focus of the company has changed, etc., etc. And then the examiner might say to you, all right, thanks for that. Now can you do some numbers? And so it is those numbers that I'm taking you into. So remember, it could come up as part of questions four and five, which is on standards, or it could come up in question two, which is on published accounts. But really, this is so easy. And it's quite interesting as well, quite topical these days, in these slightly harder economic times we face. So there you are. So in syllabus unit C, you'll have financial statements. There's an amazing number of sections within that unit, and one of them happens to be 11. And in that, you've got category A, category B, etc., talking about discontinued operations, the impact on users of accounts. And that's the context. 
So when a company discontinues an activity, it must show an analysis of the profits and losses, the component parts that comprise continuing, that comprise continuing, acquisitions, and discontinued activities. Now, the continuing is what the company starts the year and ends the year with. Acquisition is what the company acquires, starts up, maybe in the middle of the year, and it continues from the middle of the year till the end of the year, in other words, the six months, the second six months of the year, with those activities. So those are called acquisitions. And you can imagine discontinued as the opposite, where we started the year with these activities, and by the midpoint of the year, we've stopped them. Okay, so I hope that makes a bit of sense. So, in summary, where are we? The, in the syllabus, in section 11 there, unit C, it says you've got to talk about the importance of identifying discontinued operations. Why would the shareholder be interested in discontinued operations? Why not just lump them all together and say, this is the total figure, like the Companies Act requires. So if you like, this IS-8 adds a dimension otherwise missing from the Companies Act. But if you look at the Companies Act itself, it says you've got to recognize all the standards that come out even after the Companies Act is published. So in a sense, it does recognize it indirectly. But the best way to understand it is, I know what the Companies Act format looks like, I know how to do questions like that, but this is an additional skill that you need to develop, and I'm going to show you how. The other point, of course, is accounting for discontinued operations. Typical mark allocation, five, six, something like that, on top of the basic skills. And so I have a practice question here called X Limited. I'll show you a separate sheet where uh, I'll demonstrate how we tackle a question such as this.